So right now, um, if you notice on social media, you know, it's hatching season. There's a lot of babies that are starting to come out. So I figured while I have that opportunity as well to show you guys the steps that they go through, uh, basically, I'm just going to go over uh, how to, you know, once you have a hatchling guard, how to set them up for success. So right here is a baby that is just, I caught it just as it was hatching out. Um, you can see it cut its way through the egg and it has its little nose peeking through, but it hasn't fully come out. Um, and also what you can notice as well is the egg teeth. So this is something that's pretty neat um, with a lot of reptiles is uh, when they hatch out of the egg, they actually have special teeth that they use to cut through the egg. They're really tiny. I have them circled there um, that you can see them. And basically they help them get through that shell. And whenever they go through their first shed, they shed those egg teeth away. All right guys, so first things first, have the enclosure ready. Um, you should do this when it's getting closer to their hatch times. And I like to label the enclosures it's just written on a piece of tape. Um, just their lay and hatch dates and then the pairing. And then if you want to put their names or, you know, identification numbers or whatever. So you know which one you're talking about, you can do that. Um, so setup is super simple when they're first born. Um, this is my preference. Usually if I have a small little uh, cork tube, I'll put that in there. Or um, just a half of a paper towel roll and then some fake plants. After their first, you know, one to two weeks, when I know they're eating, when I'm monitoring them, I know they're healthy babies, then I'll add more um, into them. But for their first, you know, one to two weeks, I keep it even extra simple, just so I know um, that they're eating, they're finding their food, and I can see them pooping as well. So after you have the enclosure made, first thing you want to do is just put them in the enclosure and leave them be for about 24 hours. Just give it a mist um, and then let it go. Don't worry about putting food or anything in there. Um, don't, this one's already a couple days old. Um, don't worry about holding them or checking on them every, you know, 10 minutes. Just let them be. Um, and basically what you'll notice is they go through the sh their first shed. So whenever they hatch, they're basically drying off a little bit from um, all the yolk and everything that's in their egg. You just let them be in that first 24 to 48 hours. You will notice that their skin looks very silky and um, almost like cloudy a little bit. The reason being is because that first shed, you have to let them do that first on their own before you feed them or anything. Um, it's just something that they all go through whenever they're born. Now, you'll notice when they shed, sometimes they don't always eat it. You'll see, you know, the skin laying in there. Um, and then when you know, when you know you see that, that's when you know, okay, you, now you can start putting some uh, food in there and let them eat for the first time. So after you have the enclosure made, leave them in there for 24 hours. Sometimes it'll take a little bit longer. Wait till they get that first shed. Just leave it sprayed. Don't worry about holding them or anything like that. Um, and then just let them be. Then once you see that first shed, that's when you can go um, and put some food in there. All right, so when it comes time to feeding your baby gargoyle gecko, all you need is just something like this. This is just a plain, you know, water bottle cap, something real shallow. It's tiny, um, size reference. That's that little guy, here's the cap. Remember, they have tiny stomachs. You don't need to overdo it. You don't want to put too much food in there. So all you really need is to take some of your Pangea. I had already mixed this. I'm trying to do this one hand. All you need is just a little dab, just like that. That's way more than enough um, for that, for um, your hatchling gargoyle gecko. So you don't need that much. Their size reference, uh, you know, he's not or she's not even going to be able to eat that much. All I got to do is just leave that in there and let them be. Sometimes for their first 
meal I will I will hand feed them only for the first run one remember you don't want to get into a habit of that but yeah, I'll show you guys I will let them get the taste of it because this is their first time tasting Pangea so usually if you get a little bit on their lips then they taste it then they start licking it and once they do that I know okay you know they aren't going to have an issue finding their food and wanting to eat it as well so that's the next step a tiny little bottle cap or something to put the food in um, just put a little dab give them their first little taste and leave it in there um, I'm sure you'll be fine though if you don't hand feed them um, for their first feeding because it's built in their instincts you know to eat they aren't going to starve themselves so put that in there let the little guy go um, still keep the handling and you know the picking up or waking up throughout the day keep that to a minimum all right so you fed them um, for the first time after their shed now, the next most important thing to do is to check in on them every few days. The reason being, they're a little clumsy when they're little. Um, you do not want them to walk in their uh, food bowl and get the Pangea stuck to their fingers or their skin and let it dry there. Reason being, that's how it causes issues. You know, you'll you'll see it from other people where they won't have fingertips or tail tips or stuff like that because of shedding issues due to stuck food. So one of the important things after you do feed your garg um, hatchling for the first couple times when they're little is, and I do this even now for all of the geckos, whenever I'm checking up on them, usually once a week, always check their, um, their hands, their fingers, and make sure none are stuck together. You see how they're open like that? That's how I know, okay, that don't have, he doesn't have any um, that are stuck. Or look for their fingertips to see if there are clumps of Pangea dried to it. If that is the case, all you gotta do is just give them a little sauna. Basically, just take a deli cup, put a paper towel at the bottom of it, and fill it up with just a tiny, tiny bit of room temperature water. Um, the level of water just needs to be high enough where if they're standing there, it's covering their uh, fingers. Obviously, you don't want them to be swimming in it or anything. And then just let them soak there for, you know, 15, 20 minutes, um, maybe even less, depending on how, like, stressed out they look in there. Some of them hate being in um, deli cups. And if the food has not come off take a q-tip damp the tip of the q-tip and gently rub on um, their their fingers or wherever the food is at and you will get that off so that's one of the most important things too when you have gargs especially young ones um, is to make sure you check their fingers for um, dried Pangea or whatever um, food that you are feeding them so that way you can prevent any shedding issues or miss or injuries or missing you know tail tips fingertips stuff like that so that's one of the most important things too about having a baby is you don't need to hold them every day or anything like that but it doesn't hurt every feeding day you know if that's every two to three days um, just open it up inspect them you know make sure they're looking healthy making sure that you know their fingers aren't stuck together um and also a good sign if you guys ever worry about one not eating just look for poop so that's another important thing so thanks for watching guys um hopefully that helps if you just if this is your first time you know having a baby and you aren't really sure what to do um, those steps are just my personal experience. Again, I'm no expert. I don't, you know, actually study the animals. Um, this is just my experience of taking care of them. But 
hopefully that helps someone that might be a little bit lost on um, you know what to do when you start getting babies or you want to get ready for that uh, seriously it's nothing to be intimidated by it's really simple it's just making sure to keep up on everything else which is just you know the right enclosures the right humidity the right nutrition a nutrition schedule and as long as you do that you're gonna do really well uh, keeping and caring for gargs of all sizes uh, whether that's just you know small little babies or adults as well so yeah hopefully this helps as always if you have any questions or um you know if you want to talk about them whatever um just reach out to me on my instagram at red rack and that's the best place to find me i also have a facebook but i'm rarely ever on there but that'll work too if you ever want to reach out so thanks again